Hello there, I'm George and this is my workbench and today on the workbench we have something a bit special. We have an Eddystone 840A uh, shortwave receiver. It covers long wave, medium wave and all the shortwave bands up until 30 mega cycles as it was then. Uh, we know that as 30 megahertz. Um, it is capable of both um, AM and SSB CW uh, resolution. Um, it has its own beat frequency oscillator in, in the uh, circuit and at the moment um, I don't know whether it's needing a restore, a refurbish or just switching on. Now before I do power it up um, the one thing that I do know about this particular radio is that being designed for world voltages, uh, it's designed slightly differently to most other European radios insofar as the whole chassis is actually live at mains voltage. Um, it's insulated from the front panel and these bars and the back cover is insulated too but everything internally uh, where all the components are and the chassis that all that sits on is actually live at mains voltage which means it can be a little bit more of a challenge to work on um, if you get one of these and you decide you want to put your hands in it do you do so at your own risk um, I'll be honest I'm quite tentative with this one uh, because the only mains plug I actually have to run it from there's a pair of crocodile clips so I'm going to be using crocodile clips for AC mains I will be running it from my Variac and isolation transformer to at least uh, introduce a little bit more safety but um, as always with anything valve based you've got to think of your safety and if you're not capable of doing the work on it then please stay alive don't put your hands in but with that if you'd like to see this little project go ahead uh, then um, stick around and we'll see if we can take it from start to finish see you soon okay so the first thing we're going to look at is the front panel and as you can see um, it's finished in a wrinkle grey wrinkle black uh, type finish it's, it's hard to tell between the two um, has a very large dial face and it has a main tuning knob which somebody seems to have uh, drilled the hole through and, and put a bolt in. Um, now something seems to be binding there. I suppose you can just hear it on the uh, on the scale depending on where we are. It's better down this end so something somewhere is bent and uh, again that doesn't surprise me because this particular handle is bent so going through the tuning it's not a fast tuning set um, it's designed for very fine control you can really you know just tune into very very fine signals um, with this particular set as you see uh, as we get to the other end do we get the noise back no so it's it's just something down this end that seems to be bent um, you know I can see why they put the bolt in there but um, it wasn't an original uh, feature. Um, also if you look closely at the uh, the scales um, it has various things marked in different colours. Um, the red are broadcast bands and the green are actually the amateur radio bands and uh, that would give you some idea of uh, what you were going to be listening to. Obviously uh, things aren't rigid, things aren't set in stone uh, as you see I'm just uh, 
turn this dial to see if I can get that noise back. Um, and I think hopefully so it's not rubbing there again this time I wonder if it's only a slow motion thing no we seem to be okay so that's the set um, the on off switch is actually on the tone control here and it does have the feature that you can put it into standby mode so that um, when you decide that uh, oh I'm going out for five minutes you can put it in standby mode and the set stays warm internally so that when you come back to carry on listening you just flick it back to operate and away it goes um, other controls it has um, it has an RF gain control uh, so that you can uh, help use the um, receiver's own gain to either pull in a weak signal or get rid of a stronger signal and uh, it, it works in, in such a fashion as to um, uh, reduce the sensitivity or increase the sensitivity of the set. Uh, this is the band change um, control. You have four different bands and uh, it starts here, killer cycles, mega cycles, mega cycles, mega cycles. Um, the bottom scale itself, um, 0 to 2,500, um, I believe is in meters um, to give you some idea of uh, what they what they would uh, call it. Yeah, in broadcast terms, when you when you say 1,500 meters, you're you're really talking about a frequency of about 800 and 45, uh, 850 kilo, 840. 35 40 kilocycles somewhere around about there um, your top dial here um, I don't know if uh, I can get the camera in on that so let me have a look see if I can get you any closer um, is also numbered so that uh, you do have extremely fine control of frequency and uh, you, as you see you start from zero and uh, it goes up in uh, increments and it looks like there has been some rubbing on that dial so um, it might be something to look at uh, on this side you have let's go back out to the uh, the wider view um, so that it's not so dark uh, on this side you have um, automatic volume con control or beat frequency oscillator so depending on what type of station you're you're looking to receive um, you, you set this switch whether to engage the oscillator for things like uh, Morse and single sideband transmissions or um, or whether you're going to see it and listen to broadcast AM in which case you'd use the automatic volume control so that you didn't get masses of um, you know different spikes of volume uh, depending on the loudness of each station you also have um, your volume control here, your AF gain, and a noise limiter switch down at the bottom here. Now, that's the front panel. Um, I'll also say it's not a particularly light set. Um, this entire thing is uh, is metal, and um, it was designed to complement sort of ships' interiors, um, either officers or uh, or you know first-class passengers, and this is the sort of thing that would be fitted in their cabins. It's rugged, I'll say that. It's it's very very ruggedly built, um, and uh, yes, it was made in England. So if you give me a couple of moments, I'll turn it round and we can have a look at the back and then maybe take the covers off. Back in a moment. Okay, so here we are now at the back of the set. And as you see, you have a drilled uh, panel. Um, now, yes, the screws are out. I've already taken those out myself. Um, you have a loudspeaker connection and these are literally two speaker wires that uh, plug into 
a pair of sockets you can plug in an extension speaker and uh, um, have this mounted completely sort of enclosed if you really wanted to um, here you have a uh, different type of antenna um, connectors if I just pull the the rigid one out if I can um, what you would normally do if you're using a long wire antenna you would actually connect the long wire to here and an earth terminal down to here or if you're using a doublet type antenna uh, basically uh, two wires with a, a two wire feeder you would connect it in um, to the two antenna terminals there and further over we have two fuses um, one in each line we have a voltage selector and which uh, is just again you select the pin depending on the voltage of um, the ship the aircraft the, um, the 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 base the the digs the you know wherever you were in the world at the time obviously I'm going to keep this set to 230 volts and this is actually the mains connector here and um, most people will take one look at that and go what the yeah um, if you can find an original Eddystone plug um, that's a reasonable option um, the top one is positive and the the bottom one is negative um, as I said before the chassis is actually a live set and when I take the back off you'll see um, how they've actually made it so that this case this this metal case and this part of the back panel here um, are actually insulated now I also notice um, there's an extra jack been put in here and I have no idea what that is that's not part of the standard radio so somebody in the past has added that for some reason um, when I take it apart we can actually find out what that's doing so let's get the covers off and see what the insides look like okay well starting from the the back of the set um, as I say you can see how this is insulated from the rest of the set um, this particular deck will be live um, this won't be this is actually made of phenolic um, an insulated material um, you can see the insulated washers um, and there are insulated screws all over this so that uh, the main deck of the unit will never actually uh, touch this or the front panel now going through the set um, you have one two three four five six tubes six valves um, this is a rectifier valve and uh, it's used when you're on AC um, when you're running DC um, this actually just sits in circuit and uh, doesn't do very much um, this here is a ballast resistor so that when you are running on DC um, depending on the voltages selected uh, different taps are actually engaged on this ceramic coated or this ceramic wire wound resistor and they reduce the voltage depending on how much resistance is, is required so obviously at 110 volts you only need a much smaller resistance than the 230 that say the UK use or some of the other um, foreign countries um, you have a three gang tuning capacitor uh, going through this is actually your beat frequency oscillator section um, your first IF and your second IF cans this is the output transformer for the loudspeaker uh, let me go through what else have we got um, that actually is your audio output valve and that's your audio driver valve um, your oscillator valves are both here 
um, you've got a pair of electrolytics here um, and this is the back of uh, the, the tuning dial assembly and uh, I don't know if you can see it but uh, it, it's driven here uh, by a, a geared wheel um, and if I turn the tuning knob you can see it's it's quite a, a reduction and we're also getting the grinding noise again so something's moved Uh, yes, it's it's on a very 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 large reduction drive there. Um, you have one panel light here to indicate uh, that the set is on, um, which to me seems a bit stingy. But uh, yeah, I didn't design this. Um, now this rubber bushing seems to have uh, suffered with some heat at some stage. Um, so that's you know that's something I might look at um, obviously if it is actually connecting to the front panel um, I will have to check that uh, electrically it is isolated because obviously um, again you don't want to to touch anything that uh, you shouldn't so if I bring it up and if I can do it one-handed um, which is uh, quite a weight um, there's the underside. Um, let me uh, point you more up at the top and uh, we'll start looking from the top. There we go. So there's the underside. Um, the first thing I notice is we have a waxy capacitor which feels incredibly sticky which is gonna have to be changed um, fairly rapidly that's one of the first jobs I will have to do um, some of these resistance resistors they may have gone out of tolerance they may not have done um, it's something I will have to check um, if I point it more this way so I can see um, that extra wire seems to be coming that one there is what seems to have been added and it seems to have been added into um, an IF capacitor for some reason it's been it's been tagged on the IF so uh, um, it's not quite what's meant to be there so we'll have a look and uh, maybe get rid of that um, going through the chassis um, this is the trimmer section and as you can just see the veins of all the uh, trimmer capacitors in here um, hopefully I won't have to touch any of them um, it's you know if, if I can get away with it I won't um, simply because it's a lot of alignment to do um, you've got to do it for every band and tipping it forward as you see um, not really a great deal of uh, components down the bottom there um, that resistor um, let me do this one handed this one here looks like it's lost all of its color so um, that may be an issue I will have to look at the uh, schematic and figure out what what that is um, this here is actually a choke um, again to smooth out the AC or the DC depending on um, where it was being used and um, yeah on the whole it, it's it's a very nicely put together set um, as you can see uh, here and you know here just between the um, the chassis rail there and, and the live chassis there is insulated uh, phenolic washers and there's a large piece of phenolic there um, as well as there uh, just just to isolate this chassis um, from the rest of the radio uh, now if you look this is actually a casting this is actually cast aluminium um, so 
that's uh, that's one hell of a bit of an engineering feat. Um, let me see if I can uh, get a screwdriver. Um, I'll just put the microphone down over there. Um, flat screwdriver. What I will do is I will open up this uh, this can, and we'll just take a look in and see if there's any other capacitors in there that need changing. Um, I was reading through the manual earlier, the uh, service manual. Whoa, that springs out, and it did list a lot of paper capacitors. Now I can't see half as many paper capacitors as uh, as what it says so um, might be lucky and they might have been changed already um, on the other hand we might not um, just just going through and, and looking at everything here obviously these are all the tuned circuits and each one has got its own capacitor, variable capacitor on the bottom for that particular band. Um, again some resistors in there um, but as I say I can't see any uh, any paper capacitors that uh, that might need changing. Maybe maybe some of these electrolytics if they're bad but um, yeah this is actually a full casting this this is not just a, a couple of bits of tin plate thrown together it is actually a full casting in aluminium so uh, when this was designed obviously they uh, they meant business um, they certainly meant to uh, keep that as uh, as rugged as possible so let's a screw back in at least one. Just tighten that back up. There we go. So uh, I think at this stage, I think I've been waffling long enough. I think uh, we'll go there and leave that as the intro. Um, I'll leave the first power up. Um, Will I leave the first power up? Shall I power it up? Give me a few moments, I'll set it up for a first power up. Back in a minute. Right, okay, um, here we go. Um, I've set the thing up ready to power up. Um, the volume control is on maximum, the RF gain is on maximum, the BFO control is dead centre, the volume control is on maximum, noise limiter is off, AVC is set to automatic voltage control, um, we're on band 4 which is the lowest frequency band uh, that it does and the tuning gauge is set to uh, pretty much dead centre so hopefully um, we're set up to actually receive something so I'm going to first of all turn on the isolation transformer and I'm going to bring up my variac and uh, we'll slowly bring it up and what I can do is if I get my meter while well, that's doing oh, I set it to volts AC I stand that, where can I stand that in shot? Um, yeah, somewhere there, maybe there, maybe. No, can't see that. Let's, let's stand it up in the middle like that and uh, just uh, have a look at what the AC voltage is that's coming out there. So, currently on 70 volts. So I'm having to be quite sort of careful here because everything is falling around. <laughs> you don't get this on any other channel, do you? <laughs> oh, I don't know, maybe Electroboom would have fun with this. So, 70 volts. 
and um, I'm not seeing any uh, tubes lighting up at this point so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind the variac a bit more okay so now we're at 140 volts which in the UK is uh, it's about half our normal supply um, haven't heard any bangs or smelt any smoke yet so uh, I'm feeling confident at this point unfortunately I've not got a, a current meter in line so I can't uh, tell you what the current I'm drawing is but uh, yeah that's that's fairly stable let's uh, see I haven't got a panel light on yet okay so let's take it up now all right okay so now we're at 210 I should hope to start seeing filaments lighting up and indeed I do I can certainly see them on the uh, the PA tube um, is the rectifier getting warm yet I can't see anything over there seconds to warm up and I think now um, might as well okay so that's as near as full UK mains voltage I'm currently reading 237 on my other meter as to the, uh, the state of the mains voltage in the house so 238 is about what we're getting um, through the line so I'm going to take this meter out of the way for now and I'm going to see what else we've got so we've got a panel light on but I can't hear any sound at all Ah, I can now. Now, as there's no antenna on, oh, we might. Bearing in mind I have no antenna of any description wired in Thank you. 
Well, now, one of the best of it. Queen Hamilton Ball on Absolute Radio, where real music matters. I'm Chris Martin. Uh, great stuff. Of the week this week is Air Moon Safari. Which... Uh, and that actually shows the RF game. Like always on the radio. It's just because it didn't sound like anything else. So the volume that time. is working. It's just kind of like cool lounge pop. And for some reason, like if you say to a man on the street or a woman and just say, hey, do you like cool lounge pop? They'll go, probably not. Uh, play them this. They go, yeah, this is a great show. It is a great tune, but unfortunately I don't want to get a strike. So, um, first power up, first test. Thanks very much for watching and um, hopefully uh, we'll uh, get deep into the set and cure the scratchy problem and change this knob and sounds like there's a bit of hum maybe it's coming from the bench let me just no nope. so the hum's not coming from the bench the hum is coming from the radio um, also I've noticed the back of this switch is actually broken so I may have to replace the switch at some stage and um, yeah but generally uh, I'm pretty happy that we've got some sound and it's it is working. So let's uh, put it nearer the middle. And not get a strike. Work even better if I had an air reel on it. Okay, anyway. Thanks very much for watching and let's call this part one of however many it's going to be and uh, we'll see you in the next part. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye. Okay, um, I had thought I'd finished the first part of the video um, but I haven't and there's a good reason for that. Um, while I was uh, turning round to uh, do things with the camera and uh, everything else, uh, I felt a little tingle. And just putting this onto the uh, onto the bench, and bearing in mind the bench is just a, a metal bench, and against that. I'm showing full 240 volts mains AC between the radio which is sitting on a rubber mat and the bench itself so somewhere in here the insulation washers have been damaged um, there should be no current on the outside of this chassis whatsoever. And at the moment it's currently showing 240 volts with respect to ground. So uh, I think I'm going to have to do some looking into this um, before we uh, we power it up again. Um, one more problem, one more thing to add to the video. Many thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing and uh, try not to kill myself, um, obviously you, you could click the subscribe button for me, you could click like, um, send me messages. Um, if I don't answer it's because I've electrocuted myself. Uh, I try and reply to all comments and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you for part two. Thanks very much for watching.